is you're going to do two drops of one color that you select. Remember, the Oh, I'm sorry. Let me show you. Um, so you want to be sure that the hand that you're going to use is the hand slot. And I go through and get tired. Take the lid off. And you squirt directly into the mouth. Can everybody see that? Okay, that's good. That's good. Just two drops. Like Miss VD reminded us, we're all different, right? And we all like different things, and, and different you things make, make us happy. Colors and drawing stuff different. Yes. Perry? Maybe you can even put some sand in the nail if you want. That's a great idea. And all glitter on the sand. Yes, that's a great idea. All 
Aria. What are those um keys doing things? Yeah. Do you use keys? Well, these are like little mm -hmm. foam balls, but I had a hard time keeping them in there. So the um the texture of the little beads didn't really work well with the bottle, so I didn't bring those to fill your bottles because it really made a mess and they went everywhere and they got all in the Chadwick's classroom, Miss Vivi always reminds her students about everyone is unique and the importance of understanding one's feelings and emotions. We know that in a preschool setting, we have a lot of big feelings going on every day, all day. So in the Chadwick's classroom, we introduced um, a story to the children called Born to Stand Out by Nikki Rogers. I read to the students the read aloud of the story and what I liked most about um, my experience there was engaging the children. Because they already were introduced to the story in the beginning of the year, I took it a little step further and I really had the children interact with the story. Um, instead of just listening throughout, I really just pulled out a lot of the important highlights of uh, the main character, Camo, and how he feels in his true colors and when he experienced a lot of different um, opportunities to be someone else that he wasn't, he wasn't truly. Um, but in the end of the story, uh, the children were able to relate with Camo and understood the importance of being who you are and really understanding your friends around you. We talked about different big feelings, like feeling angry or sad or not being a part of a group. So we really touched on um, the differences of how that made us feel and you know, some days are better than others and some friends handle their frustrations or their, their sad feelings in a different manner. And we talked about the importance of just being mindful of how we're feeling and communicating with our friends and also the teachers. So we, we had that engagement going on there. So the transition from the story time, um, I transitioned to an introduction of an activity that we would engage in uh, to create sensory bottles and the different treasures that were selected to go inside of the uh, sensory bottle. I talked about how it would represent um, some of the feelings that we may be feeling at times, like a feather, for example, is soft. So that might um, represent a feeling of um, being calm and um, glitter, different colored glitter will represent something happy and cheery and the different uh, feelings or emotions that we're going through uh, during the day. And the, and the color could also be a representation of how we're feeling at the moment as well. So the kids really enjoyed seeing a visual of a, um, a sensory bottle and the different uh, treasures that I had selected for mine. And we talked a little bit about why I selected certain um, treasures to go inside of my sensory bottle. So from that transition, we um, broke out into small groups. And my first group started off with uh, four friends. And I feel that that type of involvement could have reduced the size of the small group. I think a more intimate size, like two children at a time, would have been more effective. Um, for me to really interact with them, ask them questions as to why they selected certain uh, treasures to go into their bottles and what they think that it would represent or the, why do they choose the color that they did. Um, so I find myself a little bit more um, um, not engaged at, you know, um, on an individual level with each of the students. However, I did try my best to interact as much as I could in addition to assisting those students who needed help.
the second lesson plan and the third lesson plan. So it was kind of like a two in one. Uh, we created a paper hat and a paper map. Now these two art um, activities were in preparation for our big unit finale, which was a scavenger hunt. So we wanted to get into character and it was an inspiration um, by Nate the Great. So the students started the year reading chapter stories um, by Nate the Great. So they got to understand what an investigator is. And prior to um, starting off the hat and paper map craft, we talked about Nate the Great and uh, remembered some of the different investigation um, opportunities that Nate the Great had and we created a t-chart about characteristics of Nate the Great and an investigator. So the engagement there for the children got them to um, really interact with one another and answering questions and just um, participating in that sense. So we again broke out into small groups about three, sometimes four children at a time. And you could really tell the difference between the um, uh, levels of each students. Some were new to paper folding. So that was a cool experience for me to, to see how well the children could be attentive to follow instructions. I, um, my focus was to work with the kids one step at a time, really slowly. Some, some students got it a lot quicker and were able to do it on their own versus others needed a little bit more hands-on um, with the student teacher. Overall, the paper and the hat craft, I think, um, was a success to introduce some fine motor skills activities and also just really paying attention and following instructions. I think if I were to do the same activity or something similar, I would um, pre-print out the sequential instructions so the kids could also have a visual of what should be done. I think that that would uh, be considered like a scaffolding learning process for them um, just to um, encourage that independent um, activity as they're looking at the visual instruction cars that they could attempt to do that on their own.